Today we're going to be taking a look at how you use readings from your compass and apply them correctly to a nautical chart. First off, why do we even need to do this? Well, looking at this globe you can see that we've got the geographic North Pole in the centre here. Everything on a chart is referenced to the geographic North Pole, so any bearings you take, they're all going to be from this point, which is, it gives you a true bearing. Now that's fine when your compass is referenced to the true North Pole, like a gyroscope or something like that, but what about if you've got a magnetic compass, which actually points to the magnetic North Pole? It could be over here, it could be here, it could actually just be wandering around here, which it tends to do. Sometimes it will hit true North, but other times it will be just somewhere in the vicinity. For a lot of navigational purposes, that is probably close enough, but if you're on a ship down here and you're wanting to navigate to the nearest degree, Obviously the true North Pole is going to be in this direction, but the magnetic North Pole could be in this kind of direction, giving you more than a degree error in the readings, and if you're on a thousand, couple of thousand mile passage across the Atlantic here, that's really going to make a difference. What you need is to find a way of working between these two different headings, and to do that we use a thing called variation. The easiest place to read variation is from a nautical chart on the compass rows. You can see this arrow here is pointing towards the magnetic north pole, and this difference between the two is your variation. The actual figure for it is given here in the centre of the rows, so you can see it's 4 degrees 30 minutes west in 2015, but there's also an annual increase of 6 minutes. So to turn that 2015 into the current year, which is 2022, we're going to add that increase on for seven years. Of course, while the chart is the traditional place to find it, you can also find variation on things like your GPS unit and lots of other electronic navigational aids which will have it included as standard. The thing is, there's only a couple of niche scenarios where variation is going to be the only error that you're applying. Nine times out of ten, you're going to have deviation as well. It's like local changes in the magnetic field which affect where your compass is pointing so it doesn't get a clean view of the Earth's magnetic field. On a ship it could be the metal in the hull or your cargo or on a small boat it could be tins of paint nearby your compass or, or anything like that. It's going to change depending on your boat's heading which can make it a little bit hard to work out. Normally a compass will come with a deviation card or your compass adjuster will fill one out for you and basically do a compass swing to work out what the deviation is on each heading. This is an example deviation card, and you can see when this vessel is heading due north, we've got a 4 degree west deviation. When we're heading straight east, that deviation drops to zero, and so on, all the way through different headings that the boat might be taking. That's great, but how do you actually apply it? We'll take the example of a reading from your boat's compass that you want to turn into a reading that you can put straight on the chart. So you've got your compass bearing, Remember, we need to correct for those local magnetic anomalies and things like that, which was deviation. And applying deviation will take us to a magnetic bearing. The difference between then the magnetic and the true bearing, remember that was a variation, and that will turn us into the true. And you've got this CDMVT. We've got a nice little acronym to remember this way around. It's Cadbury's Dairy Milk is Very Tasty. We can also go the other way if, for example, we've got a true bearing from the chart. Remember, we then apply the variation to turn it into a magnetic bearing. We then apply the deviation to turn it into a compass bearing that you can read straight from your boat's compass. Again, we've got another acronym for this, True Vickers Make Dull Company. Of course, you can swap any of the words out for something you're more likely to remember. That's great, so we've now got the order that we apply things, but how do you actually do the maths? Say, for example, I measure a bearing off the chart of 072 degrees. True. And I want to turn that into something that I can use straight on my ship's compass. The variation, remember we get that from the compass rows, so I'll read it straight off as 5 degrees west. There's probably going to be some decimals in there, but I'm not interested in that at the moment. So which way are we actually going to have to apply it? Well, let's have a look at a little diagram. If I put on the line to true north here, magnetic north we're saying is 5 degrees west of true north, because that's what our variation is. So we've got a true north here and our magnetic north here. Our bearing we're saying is 072 degrees true, which is going to be out this kind of way somewhere. So we've got the 72 degrees from true north, variation being in the west, 5 degrees. 
we can see that to measure that bearing from magnetic, it's going to be all the way around here, which is 72 plus 5, which equals 077 degrees magnetic. Now, there is an easier way of remembering this. When the variation is in the west, magnetic is best, so magnetic is higher than true applies the other way around as well. So if variation is in the east, magnetic is going to be least. So you're going to need to take variation away from the true bearing to turn it into the magnetic bearing. I don't personally like the acronyms because I struggle to remember them. So I always revert back to this diagram every time. Anyway, say our vessel is heading true north and we read off the deviation card that the deviation is going to be one degree east. How do we turn that magnetic bearing into the compass bearing? Well, the same sort of diagram actually applies. Say we're referencing things to the magnetic north at the moment. We've said the deviation, our compass, is one degree east of magnetic. So it's going to be on this side of our magnetic with one degree in the middle. We've already said that it was 077 degrees from magnetic north, which means this whole angle here is 77 degrees. So we can immediately see that from the compass, to our heading, it's going to be one degrees less, so it's going to be 76 degrees, giving us a compass heading of 076 degrees compass. Again, the same sort of acronym can apply, or mnemonic, or whatever you want to call it. Deviation east, compass least. So in this time, we're still moving this way, so we're referencing the compass, deviation least, compass least, so compass is less than magnetic. That's exactly what we've done. It goes the other way as well, so if the deviation is west, the compass is best, so you'd have to add it on. Of course, the exact same thing happens the other way around. If we start off with the compass bearing, say we measure an angle of 272 degrees compass, and we want to be able to plot it on the chart so we can get a fix. We know that our deviation from our deviation card is in this case going to be two degrees west. What is our magnetic? Again, I'll construct the diagram because that's the way I prefer to do it. So if we have our magnetic north here and we're saying our compass north is two degrees west of our magnetic north. So it's going to be out this way. So compass north is round here. We've said that our angle is 272, which is round here, and that's from compass. So that's all the way around there is 272. We said the difference between the two here is two degrees. And we can immediately see that we're going to need to take the two degrees off of that to get to magnetic. So that's going to be 270 degrees magnetic. Variation, we read straight from the chart again. So if we're in the same area, that's going to be five degrees west. And then to get to true, remember we did the same diagram before from the true to magnetic. So variation west, so magnetic is 5 degrees to the west of the true heading. So construct a diagram like this with 5 degrees. We've said the magnetic bearing is 270, so that's going to be all the way around here. So 270 from there. If we're just wanting it straight from the true round there, it's going to be 5 degrees less. So that's going to be 265. So our true bearing is 265 degrees true. And we can just confirm all that with the mnemonics. So you remember deviation west, compass best. So compass is higher than magnetic, so we've done it the right way around. Likewise, variation west, magnetic best. So again, we've applied it the right way around, but because we did these diagrams, we didn't need to remember any of those mnemonics. Hopefully that's all made sense to you, but if you didn't quite get it all, I'm going to leave a link down in the description below to an article about applying variation and deviation, and there'll be a couple of downloadable resources there to help you out. Otherwise, I hope you found this useful, and until next time, thank you for watching, and goodbye.